Hey everyone, this is Mike and today I'm going to be doing the rotational guide on Paladin. Now very quickly before I get into the video, I want to mention that I still have a giveaway going on for no pinkies on my Discord channel. So if you're interested in winning a no pinky for 7 day access, you can follow the link to my Discord channel in the description. Now back to Paladin. So Paladin is a little bit of a weird one and in the sense that most jobs center around a 60 second or a 90 second rotation and it's usually very clean on those round numbers but paladin is a bit weird in the sense that they basically have a gcd too much meaning that they have a 62 and a half second rotation or in general with skill speed a 62 second rotation meaning that they get misaligned with raid buffs now of course you can say well can't we just increase our skill speed so that we have a 60 second rotation and that's a really good point of course with skill speed our gcd goes down and if our GCD goes down, maybe we can fit that one extra GCD in that 60 second window. But there is a catch. So because Paladin's rotation also exists out of some spells, they're not affected by skill speed by, by, but by spell speed. Meaning that if you really wanted to fit that extra GCD inside those 60 seconds, you would need so much skill speed that you're basically losing damage because your crit, direct hit and determination is going to suffer quite a bit because you're going to be melding so much skill speed. And then also, if you plan to play other tanks, your gear sets are going to be pretty fucked. Like, for example, uh, like 2.40, just about that, is pretty decent for most of the tanks. And then you can, like, swap out some pieces here and there um, to, like, fit something for Warrior. And I believe Dark Knight also likes a faster GCD than that. Um, but basically, if you would want to have this super high skill speed, you would not only be gimping your own damage, but it also would make it so that you pretty much can't play the other tanks because you're going way too fast. Um, so that's why there's basically two rotations. You have the basic rotation, which is the 62 second one, um, where you decide to misalign yourself with the raid buffs. We also have a 60 second rotation where you're technically gimping your damage a little bit outside of raid buffs, but then you stay aligned with the raid buffs. Now, in general, this isn't worth it, so what most people do and what the standard rotation for Paladin has become is a 62 second one. Um, if you want to do the 60 second one, uh, then basically all you do is you leave out one atonement outside of an unbuffed window. So let's quickly talk about how that works. So Paladin revolves around two damage buff windows and then a cooldown phase, as I like to call it. So first of all, we have Fight or Flight. This is our physical damage buff. This is also the buff that we'll be starting out um, our damage rotation with, um, because this also like amplifies your auto attacks and such. Um, so if you do your opener, it's usually more beneficial to have the Fight or Flight buff active, um, because in general, it will give you a higher damage output in total. Um, other than this, we also have Requiescat. This is our magical damage buff, thus amplifying our magic spells. Uh, this will also make it so that we can cast our magic spells without a cast time, meaning that we basically have free movement during this about 10 second window. Um, so that makes it so that Paladin in certain situations can completely disengage from a boss, but still keep up time if it manages to line up with your Requiescat window, which is incredibly cool. Um, because for example, for Hades, the parts where both of the tanks are running around catching the meteors. If you're anything but a paladin, you're just spamming your ranged attack like your tomahawk, your light shot, unmanned, that kind of stuff. Um, but if you basically save your requiescat for that, you can just requiescat and holy spirit from the other side of the map and you don't even lose a single piece of damage. The only thing you're losing is your auto attack, so it's really cool. Uh, and then once those two buffs have run out, you basically go into a small cooldown phase, which lasts about 30 seconds, well, a little bit less. Um, and then you basically end your 62 seconds and then you're back going into your fight or flight. Now, of course, fight or flight and requiescat are both 60 second cooldowns. Um, so basically, you're always going to be delaying them by one GCD um, before you use them again. So that's kind of like the trade off. Um, either you delay your two buffs by one GCD, thus slightly misaligning them from the party, or you cut out one unbuffed atonement cost. Uh, every minute so that you do stay aligned but then on the other hand it's usually not worth losing the atonement damage because atonement is a really high damaging spell um, so you really in general don't really want to use, uh, lose that so if you can't uh, like if doing this won't gain you like an extra usage of fight or flight or something like that over the duration of a fight which if you have a very long fight this could be the case depending on your kill time um, but in general, 
just stick with a 62 second rotation would be my advice. Um, so because of that, we're going to go into a very short 60 second rotational um, like preview, I guess you could say, with commentary on top. Um, instead of like the general 3 minute one that I have done for the previous two tanks. So first of all, we are going to be starting with a Holy Spirit. Now you might be like, why would you use a Holy Spirit at the start of the fight? Well, that is because basically it puts our GCD on a cooldown, it allows us to run to the boss, and we'll get our mana back anyways, because you need to be above, I believe it's 8k mana, uh, when you use Requiescat, uh, so that you get the actual damage buff and the instant cost and stuff like that. Um, but we'll get that mana back anyways by the time that our Requiescat window comes up, so that's why we start out with a Holy Spirit to initiate the fight, and then during our GCD countdown we can just run up to the boss. We start out by going into our fighter flight buff, which we apply our goring dot first, or goring blade dot, I guess you could say. Then we go into royal authority, we use our three atonements. Of course, as I said, I'm going to be showing the normal rotation, so we are going to do the 62 second one. Finish our fighter flight, then we go into requiescat through which we spam our holy spirits and as you can see I can just move around as much as I want finish requiescat by using confiator or confetti as a lot of people like to call it and then we go into what I like to call our cooldown phase now during this phase you of course have your intervene which comes up again which is your gap closer um, again as like with all of the other gap closers in the game if you need it for movement use it if you can gain like GCDs because of it um, if you don't need it for movement, then just keep it for the next fighter flight buff so that you can use it under that again, because it is a physical attack, uh, meaning that you deal bonus damage while underneath the fighter flight buff. Um, so if possible, um, save your intervenes for your fighter flight window and then go from there. Now I'll just go a little bit longer finish off with our dot reapplication again and then we have a requiesce cat buff spam those holy spirits like if I need to disengage for a mechanic this is like so useful that's why yeah, I think paladin is really strong in certain fights and uh, yeah there we go so that's pretty much the rotation uh, it just keeps repeating itself every minute pretty much uh, kinda stays the same um, is why I think Paladin is probably one of the easier tanks to learn how to play because the rotation is very simple and you also don't have a crazy amount of off GCDs that you have to press like with Gunbreaker for example. Um, so yeah, I think Paladin is kind of like the perfect tank for newcomers. Um, even though it is relatively simple to play, there is some optimization that can be done. Of course, when there are fights with disconnects, uh, getting your rotation back on track can be a bit tricky. Um, but in general, the rotation stays relatively samey. Um, although there is some really cool optimization stuff that you can do on a fight-to-fight -fight basis with exactly like cutting out those atonements uh, on parts where like you know if you cut those atonements you'll get an extra fight or flight cost towards the end of the fight something like that um, but yeah that's pretty much paladin i hope you learned something and i'll see you in the next one